This is a video for the Attic Inscriptions in UK Collections project on the inscribed Fury Monument in the Leeds City Museum. This collection is home to several ancient Greek inscriptions, only one of which is of fairly certain Athenian provenance. In this video, Polly Lowe and myself, Peter Little, discuss the inscription and its journey to Yorkshire. A large proportion of surviving ancient Athenian inscriptions commemorate the dead. Indeed, the Athenian inscription in Leeds is a funerary monument. It's a grey white marble stele with an elaborate acroterion of three palmettes. On the body of its front face, there is a relief representing a lutrophoros or water jar which bears the names of two men. The sculpture and letter forms point to a date in the early 4th century BC. We know nothing more about the two men, Democaris and Hegelicus, who are named here. More information about their family and home village may originally have been supplied on other inscriptions elsewhere in the Peribolos, or funerary enclosure, in which it's likely that the inscription originally stood, like this one here at Ramnus in northeast Attica. One significant feature of the object may, however, be revealing. The Lutrophoros was a vessel which conventionally carried water for use in marriage ceremonies, yet it was a relatively common motif in classical grave monuments, perhaps indicating that the deceased was unmarried when he or she died. This is the implication of a line of argument in a 4th century Athenian law court speech concerning the property of a deceased man known as Archiades, whom the speaker maintains died before marriage. The speaker claims to prove this point on the grounds of the observation that his tomb was adorned with a Lutrophoros. So it seems that one or both of the two men on the Leeds monument may have died unmarried. This was something potentially relevant to their status and significant to those members of their family who commemorated them in this way. It's likely that the body of the Lutrophoros would originally have been elaborately painted. Digital adjustment of photography has recently uncovered traces of paint on a Lutrophoros stele now in Munich and has been used to reconstruct the colour which enhanced its decoration. Moreover, parallel stone vase commemorative monuments, such as this Lekithos or oil flask from the British Museum, suggest that such a painting may have represented the two men clasping hands in Dexiosis with one of them seated. This is a gesture that reflects the humanity of the way the Athenians commemorated their dead and is a theme that we develop in more detail in our video on the Athenian inscriptions at Lime Park in Cheshire. The inscribed names may have been placed above the heads of the two painted figures, perhaps with Demokhari seated on the left, and Hegelicus standing on the right so that the inscribed names labelled their heads. The fact that the putative painting interrupted the inscription suggests that it was sketched out before the inscription was added. This funerary monument formed part of a collection of antiquities assembled by two Yorkshiremen, Benjamin Gott of Leeds and a Mr Rawson of Halifax, West Yorkshire. This is probably Jeremiah Rawson, though it might have been his older brother, Christopher. Both Gott and Rawson were members of families which were prominent during the Industrial Revolution. Indeed, the Rawson brothers were featured in the BBC series Gentleman Jack, which was based on the real diaries of the Halifax landowner and industrialist Anne Lister. The two friends, Gott and Rawson, embarked on a grand tour in around 1815, reaching Athens, by way of Smyrna and the Cyclades, in the summer of 1817 collecting antiquities on their way. Gott died at Piraeus, the port of Athens, in June 1817, aged 24. 
He was initially buried in the Hephaestion in central Athens, which had become a favoured burial site for English and other Protestant travellers who died in Athens. A replica of Gott's monument stands today in the churchyard of St Paul's Anglican Church in Athens. The Friends' marbles were brought to Hope Hall in Halifax, the house of Christopher Rawson. From there, transcriptions of the inscribed monuments were sent to the German scholar August Burke for publication in the Corpus Inscriptionum Graecarum, which was the first, and at its time only serious, attempt to gather all the inscriptions of Greece into one publication. In the mid-1840s, for reasons which are now unclear, the objects were sold to William Gott, Benjamin Gott's younger brother. When William Gott died in 1863, his son, John Gott, presented the collection to the Museum of the Leeds Philosophical and Literary Society, which later became Leeds City Museum. We don't know which parts of Athens or Attica Gott and Rawson explored before Gott's death at Piraeus. It's possible that this monument derives from Piraeus, but it could come from another part of Athens or Attica. Nevertheless, the collection history of these monuments reflects an important aspect of the cultural history of Leeds and other manufacturing cities during the Industrial Revolution. Family members of the new commercial elite could now themselves afford to take the grand tour of European cultural sites and indulged in souvenir hunting habits comparable to those of the landed aristocracy. The act of presenting antiquities to philosophical and literary institutions itself became a demonstration of knowledge and appreciation of art and culture. At the same time, these donations raised the profile of those societies and benefited their members. To read more about the inscriptions at Leeds City Museum, we recommend that you look at our publication in AOC Volume 6. We discuss other ancient Athenian funerary monuments, including Lutrophoroi, in our videos on the inscriptions at the Ashmolean and Fitzwilliam Museums and at Lyme Park.